Um, as uh, Mark mentioned, the next speaker is going to be Elisa Lee, Lee Wynn, president of the Louis D. Brandeis Center for Human Rights and the Law. Eliza, uh, Elisa is the president of the Louis D. Brandeis Center for Human Rights and the Law, a nonprofit organization established to advance the civil and human rights of the Jewish people and promote justice for all. We're going to try seven, eight minutes, right? Thank you. Well, while you're getting that up, I'll just thank also the Riot Group and INSS and Yossi Hollander for inviting me to participate in this program with all these very distinguished speakers and panelists. It's really an honor to be here. Do we have it working out? Well, hopefully you'll get this up by the time I need it. For years, I have dedicated my time, energy, and professional expertise to defend and protect Jews who have experienced anti-Semitism and discrimination in the United States. Together with my father, Nathan Lewin, and now at the Brandeis Center, I have used the law, our most powerful tool, to guard the rights of the Jewish community. And just a couple of the cases that you may be aware of I led the representation of Avi Zinger, the manufacturer and distributor of Ben & Jerry's ice cream here, and negotiated the settlement agreement with Unilever that enabled him now to continue selling Ben & Jerry's ice cream here everywhere in Israel, throughout Israel and the Shtachim. It's now his business. You should all go buy Ben & Jerry's ice cream here in Israel. <laughs> I also represented the Zivatovskis. It was an 18-year representation, started when Menachem Binyamin Zivatovsky was less than a year old, to pursue his right to have his American passport list Israel as his place of birth. He was born in Jerusalem, and his, the, the United States, for decades, refused to let American citizens born in Jerusalem list their place of, Israel, list their place of birth as Israel because, believe it or not, until President Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, the formal position of the United States was that no part of Jerusalem, not east, not west, was actually in Israel. And that's why on the passport they would put Jerusalem instead of Israel. We finally got that policy changed in October 2020 when my client was 18 years old. They gave him the first official passport to list Israel as the place of birth for an American citizen born in Jerusalem. Still working on this? <laughs> okay. The surge in anti-Semitism on campuses in the US that we are seeing today is not a series of isolated incidents, and it is not caused by Israel's conduct. What is happening in the United States is the result of an organized, well-funded campaign to bring about the elimination of the world's only Jewish state. With increasing frequency, Jews who believe that Israel has a right to exist are being shunned, marginalized, and excluded from student clubs, support groups, social justice advocacy spaces, and even student government. They are being labeled as racist Zionists, and they are being treated as pariahs. Those who are responsible for spearheading this harassment have one goal to end Israel's existence as the homeland of the Jewish people. How do I know that those who are fomenting this hostile environment for Jews seek Israel's destruction? It's simple. They say it. Like the leaders of Iran and Hamas and Hezbollah who do not hide their intentions, these instigators have published their goals they have made it clear in writing that they are not seeking two states for two peoples. They do not desire a Jewish state of Israel next to Palestine. Their goal is to erase Israel altogether. SJP, Students for Justice in Palestine, is an organization that supports over 200 chapters on campuses across the United States. 
it is responsible for many of the anti-Zionist campaigns. For example, SJP promotes what they call the deadly exchange campaign. This is a campaign that blames the Jews and Israel for police brutality in America. According to the deadly exchange campaign theory, American law enforcement officials learn racial profiling and the aggressive police tactics from Israelis when they come on law enforcement missions to Israel. Last year, as part of a deadly exchange campaign designed to end such missions, SJP distributed this map. Good. So let's put this map up. How do I get to the next slide here? This one? What do I push? The green? The red, the middle. There we go. This map. Okay, they put this map at Tufts University. You should understand, what they did is they put together a booklet. They found that one of the uh, former employees who had been a police officer at Tufts, he didn't even work there anymore, had gone on an ADL trip to Israel. So they wanted the university to apologize for the fact that a prior employee had gone. They also wanted that the university should promise never ever in the future to have an employee go on one of these trips, and they wanted the university to guarantee that they would never hire someone who had gone on one of these trips. So they created a referendum. That means that every single student at the university on their election ballot, when they voted for their student leaders, had this issue on the ballot to vote. And SJP put together a booklet, and in the middle of the booklet was this map. Now, as you can see, Israel does not exist on this map. All of Israel is occupied, is labeled as occupied territory. Over 40 student organizations on Tufts campus supported this SJP referendum campaign. They signed onto the campaign and in the process, they endorsed this map. These are 40 organizations that represented the entire progressive community on that campus. So for the students at Tufts, this map became the litmus test. If you wanted to be on the side of racial and social justice, you had to accept this map and deny Jews the right to self-determination in any borders in the Jews' ancestral homeland. Many students succumb to this pressure to be accept, accepted and join groups on issues that they feel passionately about, like women's rights, LGBTQ rights, immigration rights, climate change. The students do what is necessary for admission. They condemn Israel's very existence. Why is this so dangerous? It's dangerous because the university students, they're our future leaders. They're the future politicians, the future diplomats, judges, and professors. They're the next law clerks, State Department officials, and journalists. We have now an entire generation that is being raised to believe that social and racial justice requires the eradication of the Jewish state. Let that sink in. We are talking about a generation that's being taught that the world would be a better place if the nation state of the Jewish people did not exist. And we know, and as Fern said, what starts on campus doesn't stay on campus, right? It spreads to society at large. Now you should know that SJP has been planning these initiatives for some time. Already in 2018, before the annual national SJP conference, they posted their goals for the conference on their website. One of their goals equated Zionism with, and I quote, ethnic cleansing, destruction, mass expulsion, apartheid, and death, close quote. The goal went on to say that you should know that Zionism can be, quote, broken down, and quote, dismantled, and even, quote, destroyed. But perhaps most importantly, the goal noted that at the conference, the students were not only going to talk theory, but rather they would, quote, develop local and regional campaigns with clear targets, close quote. Now, if your goal is to destroy and dismantle Zionism and you develop campaigns with clear targets to accomplish that goal, who are your 
targets. The Jewish Zionist students who believe that Israel has a right to exist. The campaigns that we are seeing today were planned years ago. In 2019, SJP again published the goals for its national conference on its website, and this time they explained that they seek to, quote, liberate all of Israel. They explained, and I quote, listen to this, the Palestinian struggle against Zionism extends beyond the confines of 1967 and well before the Nakba of 1947 to 1948, close quote. What are they referring to? They are referring to the Balfour Declaration in 1917 and the principle that Jews have a right to a homeland. According to SJP's 2019 goal, advocacy for the Palestinian people must not be, quote, limited to the green line, close quote, but must include, quote, 1948 lands. You can contact me later and I'll give you the links to those goals. In addition to Israelis, the students on campus who experience this harassment most intensely are often, as you've heard, the liberal, secular, progressive Jews who care deeply about social and racial justice issues. These are the Jews who are on the front lines fighting this battle. And why do they do it? Because they take pride in their Jewish ancestral and ethnic heritage, which they understand is deeply rooted in the land of Israel. These students believe that Jews have a right to self-determination in their ancestral homeland. They recognize that a Jewish homeland is necessary for the safety, security, and continuity of the Jewish people. For these Jews, Zionism is an integral component of their Jewish identity. During the question period, I'll talk to you about how we use the law to protect these students from this harassment and discrimination, but now I'm just gonna close with this message. First, it's essential that all of you who have attended here at this conference today, you must be the messengers. You have to help raise awareness and understanding in Israel that what is happening in the US is not a good faith political debate. It is not about Israel's policies. Rather, what we're witnessing today is part of an organized campaign to delegitimize and destroy the Jewish homeland. Second, we must push back together against this new form of erasive anti-Semitism, and I know the Reut group has written about this, which seeks to deny our Jewish history in this land. Yes, there was a Jewish temple on the Temple Mount, and Israel is the nation state of an indigenous people who returned to their ancestral homeland after centuries of exile and persecution. No one has the right to demand that Jews shed their Zionism or their pride in our ancestral heritage. And finally, we must appreciate the richness and diversity of Jewish peoplehood. We must understand that whether you are Chiloni, Dati, Misorati, or Haredi, Ashkenazi, Svaradi, or Mizrahi, whether you are Yemini or Smolani, we are all Am Israel, and Eretz Israel is our homeland. If we unite together and oppose those who seek to destroy us, we will win. But if we are divided, as our history has shown, we will be defeated. So let us strive to work together as Jews of different stripes and colors from all around the world to preserve what is so precious and dear to all of us, a homeland for the Jewish people that as Israel's founders noted in Israel's Declaration of Independence, is committed to the principles of freedom, justice, peace, and equality for all its citizens. Thank you.